I've changed the clocks, which means I've lost an hour. I'll get it back, of course, come October, if I live that long. But not the year I've lost. I'll not get that again. A year in which I hardly saw my friends, unless a flat-screened rectangle three by two. A year in which I didn't see my children on their birthdays, or indeed on mine. A year in which I didn't watch my grandchildren growing up, or hear them sing and play in concerts didn't play with them or teach them how to sew and bake. A year of eating solitary meals and evening after evening home alone. A year of inventing things to do to pass the time, each day the same as every other, to be got through rather than enjoyed. No waking in the morning in cheerful anticipation of something nice to come. A year in which I haven't touched another living soul, and in which the only hands that touched me were gloved, impersonal. A year in which I seem to have done nothing but get older, and disproportionately so. A year in which there was no going away, and Christmas was a non-event. And now I face a second Easter on my own. No family gathering, brothers and cousins together, and an egg hunt in the garden. Second time around seems harder than the first. At least that had a novelty to it. But now all novelty's gone, and I am facing things a second time in lockdown. Is this how it's going to be? A curiously joyless, leaden half-life? I'd hoped for better in my later years. Not killing time, shaggy-haired in endless isolation, the closing in, a foreshadowing of the grave. I think your hair looks great, Sandra. I think your hair looks great. It looks really lovely.